Yo, what's up guys? It's me, Jake here, and today I'm gonna to be doing another haul. Because most of this stuff I picked up during the Kodansha sale on Right Stuff, but some of it I did not. And to start off, I have another Osama Tesco work. If, uh, if you don't know, I'm gonna try and get more of Osama Tesco's works. And this one just became like easier to get off Amazon, and that's Message to Adolf. I got the first two volumes of that. Um, I cannot wait to finish reading this. I read a little bit in volume one, and I was really enjoying it so far. So, I can't wait to finish the uh, rest of this. I really do like World War II stuff. I think World War II is a really interesting topic. So, I definitely really cannot wait for that. The next thing that I didn't get from the right stuff uh, put on to sale, this series I actually already made a video on. I definitely highly suggest this. If you're into more grittier shonen, I would definitely suggest that. And it's It's a War Bito. Now, if you're into like shonen like um, Jujutsu Kaisen, Chainsaw Man, and Twin Star, you're probably gonna like this and even if you like like naruto you'll probably like it but it's a more gory shonen definitely really good i made a video on it i'll leave that in the description below um really do like the characters really do like the art style really do like the story cannot wait to get more and um if you guys know anything about this series then you know that volumes two five and six are the little bit harder to find volumes of course they're not impossible they're like 15 to 30 bucks each but i got this all for 40 bucks so i decided to pick it up and I can't wait for the rest of it because I ordered the rest from the right stuff uh, Viz sale. So I cannot wait to pick up the rest of it. It's probably going to come in by like early December, uh, late November, uh, late November, early December. Um, when I finish this series, I'll probably make a review on it. But for right now, I don't know when I'm going to be able to finish it. So stay tuned for that because I really do enjoy the series so far. And I hope that it continues in the direction it's going because it's really good. And now... I'm going to finish off with the next non-Kodansha thing, and then the rest of this video is going to be Kodansha stuff. That is Infinite Dendrogram Volumes 6 through 8. Now, if you remember from my past uh, manga haul, I got Volumes 1 through 4 of this. I got 1 through uh, 4, no, 5 through 8 now. So now I'm currently up to date. Uh, I need to finish reading the first volume right now. Uh, I really am enjoying it. It's just I have been really busy, so it's been really hard, so... Yeah, but I also think that this art for just covers of light novels is so beautiful. I don't know what's up with the art for light novels, but it's better than half the manga art I've seen. I definitely enjoy the manga, the light novel art so much. And then next up, a series that's going to be made, uh, I'm going to make a video on probably tomorrow. Because I really, really enjoyed this first volume. And now we're getting to the Kodansha stuff. And that is Blue Period. Now, this came out like a month ago, I believe, but I just got it, and I cannot wait to get more. It really enticed me. It's really unique. It's a very nice-looking volume. Definitely highly suggest picking it up, and there's probably going to be a video on this either tomorrow or Saturday. So stay tuned for that. Okay, next up, the rest of this is going to be from Ken Akamatsu. So if you know anything about me, I've been trying to get more of Ken Akamatsu's works, and I just have a little bit more to go. Only a couple more volumes, and I'm caught up with all of them in English. To start that off, it's volume 30 through 38 of Negima. Now, the only volume I am missing currently is volume 29, but that was out of stock on right stuff, so I'm just waiting for that to come in. And, yeah, I cannot wait to read more. I just read, like, the first five volumes. It's really interesting. I might make a uh, first impression review on this series as well, but I didn't even know this was a Kodansha release, because I know that was in Del Rey, and I think Del Rey got bought out by Kodansha at one point, since a lot of their Del Rey stuff went to Kodansha. But I'll be honest, I really wish that this new Q holder went to Viz instead of Kodansha, because if you don't know Kodansha, they have very good uh, big problems when it comes to spines, and I really don't like how some of Kodansha things happened with spines, because... Some of these spines are in perfect condition, and some of these spines are not mangled, but, like, really annoying. And you'll see that a lot on the UQ holder volumes, but it really annoys me sometimes, because I, I really enjoy the series, and then Kodansha really destroys the spine. So I'm just hoping they work on getting better, like, spine work or something, whatever it's called. I hope they just get better at it, since... Ken Akamatsu's works are really good. He has a unique art style or a unique way of telling stories with a lot of characters and keeping them memorable. So I definitely highly suggest Negima from the first five volumes alone, but of course there's 38 volumes, so I can't just suggest it right off the bat. 
and some volumes are pretty hard to find. So I know there's uh, omnibuses, but Kodansha omnibuses aren't great. So I don't know if I can just suggest those, <laughs> but yeah. And after this, I'm gonna be clearing this so I can actually bring in the last series I picked up. So let's just get straight to it. Now, last but not least, in the final volumes of this haul, I already have volume one, uh, one of this series, and that's volumes two through 19 of UQ Holder. Now, I know you might be saying, I'm missing a couple volumes. Yes, I'm missing volumes 20, and 21 comes out in November. But I definitely think that I'm going to be reading this pretty fast right after I finish Negima. So I read the first volume, and I was really intrigued with how it looked and how it was. I think this is like, this is a sequel to Negima, but I think that the, uh, after him doing like Love Hina and Nagima, you can kind of see the upgrade in art style just purely because of the covers. Um, now, there's some things that Kodansha has done to these that really annoy me, and that's the spine work. I think the spine work, like I said earlier, for these can, can be way better. An example would be right here in Volume 3. It's really, uh, really, really annoying. And one of my volumes later on, it also has weird, very weird, like, cover damage. And... I'm definitely not going to say it's Right Stuff's fault, because I definitely don't think it's Right Stuff's fault, but I definitely think Kodansha needs to just work on that, because almost everywhere, if you see a Kodansha volume, the spine is always messed up. I'm really lucky with how Blue Flag turned out, but most of the time, the spines aren't in amazing condition, so I'm really lucky with most of my volumes being in good condition, and I don't know, man, I just hope that they get better at it in the near future, because it really sucks. It really does. I think that Kodansha has a lot of room to improve mostly if they're trying to compete with viz because viz is really good with how they do their spines and covers and everything so of course their viz bigs are not ever in good condition the viz bigs are pretty bad quality but what can you do but overall i think odonsha does pretty well and this series i cannot wait to read um so yeah, I also don't know how long it's going to be till volume 22 comes out, or if 22 is the final volume, purely because uh, the 21st volume got delayed. It's supposed to come out early November, now it's going to be in late November, it's coming out November 24th. I think that's what they said, but it's still sent an email to me, I don't know when it's coming out, but yeah. I also think that these covers and spines are so nice looking, they're just so pretty. Of course, some of these covers might be a, a little not, you know, good. Not by, by not good, I mean a, a little bit graphic, but it's okay, it's okay. You get used to it. By the way, when I first saw this, I thought it was Hestia for a second. When I first saw that, I'm like, wait a second, Hestia is not in UQ all day. <laughs> so I, I had to like, look back and be like, oh wait, that's just a girl in a towel. But yeah, I only have a couple more volumes to show off of this series, and the next volume after this one to show off is going to be the one that has the weird cover damage. I don't know how it got it, but it's like, it's really weird. So, um, it's like a mix of cover and spine damage, if you can see that. I don't know what it is. I'm going to keep this volume anyway. It's not too bad, but like, it's really weird. I never expected that to come out, like, to get it like that, but otherwise I'm still in pretty good condition. And now my last two volumes of this haul, UQ Holder Volume 18 and UQ Holder Volume 19. Now, I cannot wait to read this. It's going to be a really long time because I'm probably going to try to binge this in Negima in the next couple of months. Um, so yeah, if you, if you enjoyed this video, guys, please like and subscribe. I hope I see you guys next time. Peace!